I think I broke it. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. Hello, my energetic enthusiasts. I'm Jake, and welcome back to Ordnance Lab. For those of you that were watching the videos previously about our shape charges, I'm sure you're eager to see this one next because it gets a little bit better. And for those who are new to the channel, well, welcome to our world of explosives here, where we explain all the exciting things that it comes with the world of boom. Right? And today is the second phase of our testing of shape charges, improvised shape charges, and that's wine bottle shape charges. Now, this does not mean we're using wine uh, to uh, make the shape charge, but rather the bottle. And as we can have here, we have a neat demonstration of a shape charge, well, the components of the wine bottle shape charge. The top, which is totally worthless, the, uh, the plastic uh, sheath that goes around the bottle, and then the bottom of the bottle. Now. I had to go through a quite a bit of arts and crafts hour to cut these in half. And then eventually we got smart and we bought a uh, bottle cutter, but uh, we were using a torch and the string method, it's just horrible. And you get this awful cut, which also by the way, definitely affects how these shape charges work. But eventually we got several to work and they work rather well, as you can see here in this video pretty soon, but until then. So how is this working? And it's actually quite interesting. You see, we're gonna go on a little bit of a tangent here on what the history of wine bottles. You see, back in the day, wine bottles uh, they used uh, were, hand, were blown by hand by or blown by glass. By, uh. In reality, what it is is this was the part where the glass blowers back in the day, when they used to blow bottles by hand, they would seal it off at the bottom and then push it upwards. It would help with the strength of the bottle, but. It also helps also in machine processing because wine bottles today are manufactured by machine. They could put it in here on the machine on the assembly line and put say something like a rod in here to keep it steady as it goes through the assembly line to get filled up. So re in reality, the punt is no longer a necessity in modern day manufacturing. It's just there out of aesthetics and tradition. As wine manufacturing tends to be, there's still a lot of tradition despite the fact that it's heavily industrialized. Don't let, don't let anybody fool you. But anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these shape charges, right? And then we place them in a plastic liner like so. And then we fill them up with the same amount of, of explosive as before with the Coke bottle shape charges. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot these against the similar metal targets as we did with the Coke bottles, and we also made a little bit of modification. But the idea is we're gonna see this, how they perform. Now for an additional bonus, we also have a Coke bottle shape charge to fire it against in comparison to the wine bottle shape charge. These obviously gonna perform way better because they're a lot less, how do I say, not to say improvised, but they're a lot more uh, consistent because I have this to prefab as the liner was with the Coke, I had to eyeball the, the plastic sleeve and they were not the most accurate. And I was always getting these odd shape penetration uh, holes in the metal. Whereas this one, it's gonna be a whole lot more concentric and a whole lot more effective. Not to mention too, that we use the same wine bottle every single time so that they have the same punt because no two wine bottles have the same punt. Some are deeper than others, wider, different shape. So to keep cons uh, things consistent, we use the same wine bottle every single time. Now, let's head over to the demo range and see how these things perform. As we mentioned before, our first video on shape charges was on the Coke bottle shape charge, or soda bottle shape charge to avoid any litigation issues with a certain company, wink wink. And sure, we eventually had success with the shape charge, but we started out with many failures such as the charge not detonating, or the charge didn't lens the explosion and did nothing against the target except damage the surface. Eventually we got the charges to work successfully. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to go check it out. We cut numerous wine bottles at roughly the same size and chose the bottles with the same dimension of punt. This punt is going to act as the shape charge that lenses the explosion, as the glass will act as a penetrator. The glass bottle segment was fitted into a PVC sleeve to help contain the liquid explosive charge and to allow for a cap to be placed on the assembly. To complete the wine bottle shape charge, we placed three wooden sticks on the side. These will provide the standoff distance. We decided on 15 centimeters for the standoff distance from the bottom of the charge to the target surface. The first target is the same multiple plates of steel stacked on top of each other. Each plate will act independently when hit by the shaped charge, unlike with a solid piece of steel. Each plate varied in dimension and the total stack thickness was approximately 25 millimeters. Much like before with the soda bottle shaped charge, these will be loaded with 300 grams of our composite liquid explosive, codenamed Gemini. It is comparable to TNT in performance. 
We then capped the charge and placed a non-electric blasting cap. We lit the fuse and stood back to a safe distance to watch it go kaboom. As we walked up to the target, we were exceptionally pleased to see the giant hole in the plates and in the ground. The glass penetrator went about 65 millimeters past the target into the ground. Talk about impressive. The metal plates were all punched through as if they were nothing significant. The first plate showed a bit of an oblong shape indicating the shape charge was a bit inconsistent. This is totally expected though, as this is an improvised device and not made with great precision. The holes in the rest of the plates were nice and round, a great sign to see. We can observe that the shape charge didn't struggle at any level to penetrate the plates. The exit hole was this gnarly warped shape that looks like it was carved by a surreal artist on a bad trip. So far, the shape charge is showing some solid performance. Our next target is a thick plate of steel. We obtained these pre-cut steel targets used at shooting ranges that give a pleasant gong when struck. This one has a thickness of about 32 millimeters, or just under 1.25 inches. The wine bottle shape charge was given the same 15 centimeter standoff, loaded with the explosive, and primed with a non-electric blasting cap. The slow motion capture shows yet another nice and uniform blast and was powerful enough to knock the GoPro around on its mount. We found a large and uniform hole in the target which was very exciting. We are rather impressed on how well these wine bottle shape charges are performing. The exit hole was also uniform and very protruded. As with the stacked plates, the wine bottle shape charge didn't struggle at all to penetrate the metal. The penetrator didn't stop with the steel plate, it went on further by about 78 millimeters into the ground. Another outstanding performance by this wine bottle shaped charge. The last test is against a steel beam with a large air gap. This is designed to see if the air gap will disrupt the penetrator and hinder performance. The steel is 6 millimeters on both facets and has an air gap of about 84 millimeters. The total thickness from facet to facet is 96 millimeters. The charge assembly was pieced together, loaded with 300 grams of our Gemini liquid explosive, and then primed with a non-electric blasting cap. Once again, the wine bottle shaped charge detonated with a beautiful blast. These charges have proven to be far more consistent than the soda bottle shaped charge for obvious reasons. We can immediately see that the wine bottle shaped charge didn't have any issues showing the air gap target who's the boss. The penetrator left a hole in the ground that measured in at approximately 130 millimeters. That's pretty awesome. The backside of the target was warped outward with a heavily protruded hole and solidified glass that was left over from the penetrator. This side view in the target, you can see that the penetrator went right through the target like a hot knife through butter. The top of the target was warped inward with a slightly asymmetrical hole. Sure, a uniform hole is desired, but we can't expect much from an improvised shaped charge. Besides, these charges are performing so well that nobody is complaining. For a little comparison, we whipped up another soda bottle shaped charge. We had enough parts left over and who doesn't like to see another boom? The more the merrier is our motto here at Ordnance Lab when it comes to explosives. This charge was filled with the same 300 gram load of Gemini liquid explosive as all the previous charges. Pouring the explosive into the charge is so pleasing as it has the same consistency of runny pancake batter. This charge will be detonated against a 32 mm steel plate target. Will the soda bottle charge redeem itself and overcome its poor history? Well, let's find out. This explosion hit the main camera hard enough to cause a right error to the SD card. Impressive given its distance from the blast, so we lost one camera for this shot. We can see a nice uniform explosion though, which is a good sign. At first sight, we were worried that it didn't work. We saw a ton of glass particles and no obvious hole on the surface. When we flipped the target over, we found an exit hole indicating a successful shaped charge. The hole was rather small though, showing that the soda bottle shaped charge struggled in this situation. Unlike the wine bottle shaped charge that really gave the plate the business. 
The clear winner between these two shaped charges is the wine bottle shaped charge. As you can see, the wine bottle shaped charges perform spectacularly. Uh, better than my expectation. I was a little doubtful because the Coke bottle shaped charges were not the greatest and I was like, oh, these suck. But in reality, the wine bottle ones were phenomenal. And to the point where they were actually rivaling some of our uh, industrially made, you know, professionally, uh, professionally made shaped charges that we have on hand. And then some of the other ones we've, we we made through 3D printing with metal liners. Of course, those are, will always outperform these improvised shaped charges, but for what they are, they do phenomenal. Uh, they're not the most efficient because we still have to use a significant amount of explosive to get the same effect, whereas more professional ones with uh, adequate, properly shaped liners and they're more concentric, they're gonna obviously be more efficient. But hey, you know, for taking a bottom of wine, a bottle of wine, cutting it in half or relatively in half and putting a plastic sleeve on top and then uh, uh, using wood as the standoff for the line, you know, and then sort of eyeballing it on the target, they did all right. So I would call this a complete success, or let's say 95% success. But so, with this complete, now we can move on to more shape charges, such as the martini glass shape charge and some other ideas I have on hand. So be sure to stay tuned. We have many more videos to come, especially on shape charges and a whole bunch of other experiments we have on the books. We've had received tons of suggestions on Reddit, as well as on our uh, comment section, uh, through messages on Patreon, email, and especially on our Discord server. Be sure to check that out. You can message me or Sean dire directly if we can't, you can't reach us through email. We, we do, I try to get back to people as best I can on Discord. I'm a big fan of engaging with our viewers because, hey, the, we do this so that you guys are entertained and informed, and we're kind of you know removing the negative aspect of explosives because let's be honest there's a, a bit of, the, of a negative stigma on the world of explosives be sure to like and subscribe hit the uh, the uh, notification button because sometimes these videos the you know we put up videos we try to get one every two weeks ish sometimes less or a little bit sooner and YouTube you know they kind of squash us sometimes because I guess they don't like our content oh, I wonder why uh, bias I tell you it's horrible but thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next episode here at Ordnance Lab thanks for watching if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.